hi this is going to be a quick tutorial putting uh, <clears throat> an abstract angel on the mixed media on canvas that we made this morning I uh, grabbed up a handful of palette knives uh, I still have some brushes laying here in case I need them and the paints that I grabbed out to use are white uh, this is titanium white from Blick um, I grabbed out a cad yellow deep hue to work on her hair. I've got um, Liquitex unbleached titanium and a raw umber and a little bit of uh, metallic gold. And the first thing I'm going to do is sort of place on the canvas an outline of sorts of what the angels the size is going to be to sort of map that out for us to make it simple and let's see if I can grab me a piece of palette paper and I have a, a few scraps I'll show those to you in a minute out there of uh, other things that that we can add at the end if we decide we want to but the first first things first I'm going to use this just an off-white cream color this is unbleached titanium I'm getting a little bit of it on my disposable palette paper there and just gonna get just a medium-sized palette knife here I chose to do this under even though our angels gonna be for the most part white I, I didn't want it to be stark white on here so I hope that, you know, give me some hearts or something. Let me look up here if you can. Uh, hey, Shanna. Hey, Tanya. If if y'all can, can y'all see everything real good? Because I'm down underneath uh, the camera. I just have this over the top. And I can't uh, tell for sure if y'all can see real good. So give me some hearts or something. Awesome. There's a thumbs up. So I'm going to assume that you can. And we're just going to look for where in... Um, in the on the canvas we did this background this morning if you didn't see that part i did the sides just with some uh, yellow ochre and some uh oh burnt umber i think and this is a piece of scrapbook paper i just used some mod podge and mod pot tore the edges off of it mod podged it down there and just sort of haphazardly uh brought the uh yellow ochre and I think it was burnt umber actually up around with it just to sort of age the edges of it and now I'm just got a sort of a medium size this is a plastic you know Walmart special here but let's see I'm figuring we got to think about sort of the head of our angel and uh, she'll probably have a little bit of hair coming down let's make that sort of semi roundish oval and some hair And then that's basically all we're really going to do as far as a body. The rest of it's just going to be just getting the indication of some wings on here. This is something that anybody can just get on, on their canvas really quick and easy like without having to stress out over it. Like I said, this is just going to make it to where when we're going with the other colors in a minute, we can uh, give ourselves a break and and just sort of go with the flow. You don't have to stop and worry about you know where your colors should start and stop and stuff like that there'll already be a little bit of a something on there for you these are just the wings I'm kind of putting in an indication of and this is just you know too gonna sort of lighten up that background and because it is kind of busy when we're looking at it this way and this is gonna take some of that busyness away and we may or may not even cover up you know most of this as we go let's make her robe kind of be sweeping a little bit I love the I love to craft year round, but I love to do some extra stuff around Christmas time. It just it's I just get in the spirit more this way when I'm thinking about it and enjoying myself a little bit. Okay, 
and it doesn't have to be symmetrical or anything here. We're just sort of getting something down on our on our sheet. I'm going to dry that just a tad. It doesn't matter if it mixes white is what we're going to go over with next. And it really doesn't matter too much if, uh, you know, if this blends with it. That makes it look a little bit better. But because I did apply that pretty thick, may as well dry it a little. I have this little craft dryer, but I really prefer that $10 hair dryer that I got at Walmart, but I have all of those at work, and I'm actually home today. We're having a Christmas festival outside of our store tomorrow, and I'm trying to get a whole bunch of uh, ornaments and things like that made to put in our booth for our artisan market. That's probably plenty. Cause like I said, it doesn't matter if you... Uh, blend over it a little bit. Let me get out the white. Use a different palette knife to get this onto my palette. I'll probably use that same one to paint with here in a minute, but I'm going to use a different one to get it out so that I don't contaminate the inside of my jar here. Palette knives aren't like brushes. You don't have to worry so much about getting all your paint off at the end of every time. And I always chunk them in my in my water at the end of the day. But a lot of times it's so thin that it's already dried on there anyway. And I didn't say this in the beginning. We're going to go ahead and use a little bit of texture paste on here. <clears throat> so if you didn't catch that this morning. Let me see if I can put it up here without wonking things up too much. Uh... The texture paste just stays thick, and we will, uh, I'm just going to take the same palette knife I just pulled the white out with. I'm not That's wet, so I'm not going to put too much on it, but um, let me pull that in together, get some of that white over here with it. The texture paste doesn't change the color of whatever, you know, if you were wanting this to be blue right now, you would mix this with blue, and it wouldn't change your shade of blue any, but it would, you know, uh, give it that thickness and a little bit of texture to go on your on your piece and that's what we're looking for here i'm going to go ahead and put that one in my water and i'm going to stay with this same palette knife for right now for this big part and i'm just going to go with my point out to the edges that are farthest away and then my wider point point in and try my best see how lightly i'm holding it Try my best not to be so heavy-handed. That's my specialty is heavy-handedness, so we'll see. But I love the, you know, the look that it gets when there's some texture to these pieces. And I'm just scooping it off of here in a blob. It's almost like a, like a marshmallow frosting, like a whipped marshmallow at this point. And I'm going to turn the canvas to make this one easier. And give a little bit of texture to her robe, too. And going in that uh, curve through here helps to show a little bit of the movement that I'm wanting to put in with the robe. Sort of easily flatten that out a little bit up there. I'm wanting the texture in there, of course, but not in the great big lumps. I can't see the comments, so if y'all are commenting, I will uh, definitely uh, come back to it later. And if you have any questions or anything, I'll answer those. If I, if you share, that's really awesome and helps me out too. And I do appreciate it. Now I'm going to just have it flat. And I'm not trying to flatten this out. I'm trying to just spread a little more of it here and there to sort of get that indication of movement 
coming through there. And I'm not going to put the texture up in the up in the hair. Okay. While that's drying a little bit, I'll stop and get a small palette knife and we'll do her hair. And I got the, where did I put my paint? I got the, she's going to be a blonde today. I got the Cad Yellow uh, Deep Hue because it's more of an orangey yellow. I'm just going to put a tad of that out. And I'm going to put um, <clears throat> just a little bit of, I don't remember what colors I had out here in the beginning. I'm going to put just a little bit of the Burnt Umber there beside it to sort of streak her hair in with so that it's not all one color. I'm just gonna go very lightly again, just, I mean, I'm barely holding on to this. And mix a little bit of the yellow and the brown together. When you're thinking about hair, it's usually, you know, deeper on the under hair and lighter on the outer hair. And then there's usually a, a, an even lighter portion that, um, you know, where the sun hits it. I'll, I'll mix some white in with this after I get this sort of placed in. This is just sort of an indication of the back of her head and her hair coming through. She's turning into more of a brunette than a blonde, huh? Everything happens for a reason. Somebody may need her to be more of a brunette. Just sort of have the, her hair going, you know, through the wind in the same manner as, as her gown and her wings are flowing. More. And that's very thick. There, there is an, an amount of texture to her hair as well in it, but it would have looked silly had I went flat with it. Now on top of that to get those outer layers a little more blonde. Then I'm going to grab a little bit of white to mix in with that yellow. I just grabbed it with my palette knife there and brought it over here. And I don't want it like stark white like her wings, but I really want it to be more of an indication of a of a very pale yellow than a a dark yellow. And we're going to be thinking of the wind blowing that the sun would probably be coming down through this way. So we'll streak a little bit of this down through here, but not too, too much. There's more shadow there, so we'll leave that darker, and we'll leave it alone. Now our hair's done. And now we're not going to leave it alone. There we go. I love this tiny little thing. This is one of my newest ones. I don't use it very often. I'm going to stop right now while this is drying a tad and just talk about some other things that we can do. When we get done with this, you'll obviously be able to leave it alone and it's going to be an abstract angel. But since it is a mixed media piece, that's when you can go back and add any kind of crazy thing that you want to on there. I have this washi tape. Washi is like a paper tape. Uh... Let me see if I can get this. It was just sitting here, so maybe I can use it if I can get it to not tear crooked. Um, and you could just put a couple of pieces of it somewhere. It doesn't have to be torn straight. It doesn't have to anything. There you go. There's absolutely no reason for that to be there, but I'm going to put another one below it. And another one before below that, because I like to do things in threes. We'll make this one even smaller. Boom. No reason for it, but it's there. You could glue buttons on there, sequins on there. Uh, you could just little pieces of ribbon on there. I don't have, my glue gun's not hot, and I don't have my three-in-one glues that work, so you, I'm not going to mess with that, but see how it would look cute with that. Or you could use uh, some texture of this kind of ribbon would have looked really cute on there. 
buttons, bling, anything you want to at, uh, at any point on there. I'm going to dry just a tad to try to see if I can get a crust on top of this uh, texture medium. As I got a, a little bit of gold I'm wanting to put on there and then I'm going to spread a little bit more white to kind of fill in some of these areas that aren't raised from the uh, texture medium. But hopefully you can see some areas of this are probably a 32nd of an inch high, but some of these are, you know, a good quarter of an inch thick. So those are going to take longer to dry and um, I'm not going to want to dry them a whole lot with this because I don't want it to crack later or anything. But I do want to just kind of put a little bit of a skin and see if I can be gentle enough with my knife here in a minute to fill that in. Okay, I think that's enough. I'm going to... Uh, Right now, I'm going to go ahead and go in with a little bit of the burnt umber just to put a little depth in there and hide a little bit more of the, the scrapbook paper that's under there. I'm just going to use a medium-sized one because that's what's sitting there. And this is just to give it a little bit of depth. I'm just going here and there and in between some of the raised areas be deeper toward the center and lighter toward the edges because that's the way things are everything once that I think for me once I realized that when you're painting and stuff like that it, it that light is everything when you're thinking about the the depths of color and the likeness and where the light hits it and, and how you know when you look outside at the trees you think oh the trees are green but when you really take a minute and look at the trees you know if you go out and grab a handful of pine needles they're all going to be green but if you stand back and you look at the trees in the yard or in the woods wherever you you may be and you look at them there's going to be areas that look like it's a lot deeper darker you know foresty green and there's going to be tips of that that are that are a pale green when you're up close to it and you're so close to it that you can't see what's going on then it you know it sort of all just looks green but uh the way that the sun hits it, the outer ones where the sun's beaming down on it appear to be a lighter green. And the ones that are deeper down in the tree in the shaded areas really appear to be a deeper green. And usually the bottom of the tree is going to appear to be a deeper green. Really, it's all the same color green. But it appears differently because of where the light's hitting it, how much light is hitting it, and how much shade that it's in. So that, that was sort of eye-opening for me as a as an artist was to really realize that everything is not the color everything is the tones and the shades and the depths of the same colors by adding your white or adding your gray or adding your black to control how the eye sees the light and I know this is so busy looking right now but we're going to tone that down with some white in a minute And hopefully that dark will stay in there just to leave us a little bit of shadowing and not look like a, what, what is it, a tiger, that tiger spots? So right now it kind of looks like tiger spots. That's okay. I'm mostly wanting to get the brown not to smear in my white is what I'm doing now and making sure that it's at least a little bit dry there okay now I'm just gonna dig back in my white and lightly brush over it let me see what this is a dry one
This is where learning to, and a little bit is coming off in my paint, so I have to be careful not to be spreading tan when I'm wanting to be spreading white. And I'm remembering to come around in this angle to get that uh, idea of the wind blowing in that direction. I've been painting with brushes my entire life, but only with a palette knife for about the last year. And I'm still learning, and I'm so happy to to be able to share that with other people who are interested in it because it is a lot of fun, and it does give you a totally different look than you get with the brush, although, you know, with some brushes you can, if I had a really stiff brush, this is not one, but I would, if you didn't have any palette knives, you could use a butter knife. You probably see a butter knife in my supplies there, but if all you had was a brush, try to get your stiffest bristled brush, and you just hold your brush in the same manner as you hold your palette knife, and, and do the same thing. It's not going to give you quite the same effect, but pretty dang close. Now I'm just trying to wispy it out a little. Bring this around, not blend it in, and I'm going to switch to my smaller one. And give yourself a little bit of grace when you're doing this too. It's easy, 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 or I wouldn't be doing it. But at first, it, it's intimidating. Or it was for me. Maybe it's not intimidating for other people. But it, it was for me. Let's see. Let's make this one go up and around. Kind of lighten that up a little bit. And remember that you can always turn it around. Now I'm going to use the side of my palette knife and try to scrape up some of this white. I'm going to use the white to go around her head a little bit. And this is where I... Uh, let's get a little bit loose here while I'm before I run out of white. Uh, this one has taken me a little bit longer to get good at, and I'm still no expert, but I'm going to explain it the best I know it. I'm getting uh, some of the white on the side of my palette knife and if I go down hard which I have a tendency to do it's not going to leave as much of a line as it does if I if I'm gentle with it so I'm going to try to be gentle here and I'm just trying to outline her hair just a little bit So that you can see where it sort of starts and stops. Put her a couple of streaks in there with it. And now I'm probably going to go to black. And I ordinarily wouldn't go to black because it's not my favorite color. I would go into the, uh, I usually use the burnt umber in place of, of black. But because there's so much burnt umber on here already. I'm afraid it won't uh, show. Oh, I wanted to say this too. If you, this was the other side of the scrapbook paper from earlier. You could uh, take a piece, a random piece of this, and then I would, let me just show you this real quick. I would always take some type of ink or marker or whatever and distress those edges to where they shut. Well, let's make that not have a point. Distress those edges 
And then you could glue this anywhere on your page to give it a little bit of a, another look of mixed media. And I may add two or three of those later after this dries. Right now I have such a thick conglomeration of paint on there. Um, I wanting to continue that's got white on it to move forward so that oh that was a lot of black there we go and i used the blick artist acrylic on the black and i'm gonna switch out i'm gonna have to wipe this off i'm gonna switch out to a little bit larger palette knob let me see what i've got here Maybe I'll use this one. I'm going to switch out to a different palette knife here. And I'm going to do the same thing as I showed you earlier. And I'm just going to get just a little bit. This is very, very thick paint. That's why I love this uh, Blick Acrylic. If I wanted to thin it out, I could thin it out. But I can also uh, use it very thick. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to have to put my glasses on here. I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, sort of outline in her head. And we're not wanting to trace this perfectly and have perfectly rounded marks and things here. The, you want these to be random in what they are. You know, the they're, they're pointy and sharp because that's, you know, what the edge of a palette knife looks like. I do have some rounded palette knives, but... They're not in the, you know, in the less expensive sets. So I'm just showing you what you can use with the stuff you have at home or the stuff you can grab at Walmart. Okay, first we're going to come around here. We're going to see there's her shoulder, right? Mark that in. And then we're going to come around and mark her robe. And this is where I don't have as much patience as I should, so I don't do this as often as I should because after every, every couple of times I place the palette knife down, I have to reload it. And when I'm painting with a brush, I can paint for a long time before needing to reload. So basically, I'm just right now I'm just sort of outlining so that you can see better the the flows of what is is the robe and what is the uh, what are the wings. Oh, I just stuck the corner of it in the black paint. Where is everybody from? I am in uh, West Central Louisiana. We're about a little over an hour from the Gulf Coast. And we're about close to an hour from, about 45 minutes from Jasper, Texas. We're about 30 minutes from the Texas border. And uh, go ahead and put a little in here. Uh, in the central part of the state, we are about two hours south of Shreveport, Louisiana, about five hours west of New Orleans. I'm now just using this to tap down to give indications of the loose ends of the wings here. And all of this is optional. If you come to any point in here where you're like, hey, I like it the way it is, then that's where you stop. I just wanted to um, give you a few options for keeping on, keeping on. I'm still a little bit worried. I think her, her hair blends in too much, so we're still going to do something different with that here in a minute. But since that's the back of her head, it's not like I can put flowers in it like I normally would if it was facing forward. I'm just sort of dotting and dabbing now with this to sort of bring it out. And I'm pushing too hard, not listening to my own self. Let me go there. Lighter, lighter, lighter.
I don't want too much black through there, but I'm going to do it anyways, a little bit. Okay. Just not exactly sure what to do about that hair. I'm going to pop back into my yellow just with a brush this time. See if I can. How about that? Sometimes I say just go buy the cheap brushes. It's okay. But I normally... like to use the better brushes I get them from blick.com here you go I have an idea I have an idea we're gonna take let's see what brush I'm wanting something flat I'm gonna take this little angled brush it's sort of flat I'm gonna wet it a little bit so I can flatten it out a little bit better and I'm gonna go around her head with a decent amount of white so that her head part sticks out better. Almost like a halo. Sort of like she has a little glow about her there. I think that makes her stick out a little bit better, her hair. And it won't look as silly later as it looks right now because as it dries, it'll be a little bit lighter. You'll still be able to see some of that background behind it. Okay, now let's get our gold. And I have, I wanted to use a really pretty gold leaf that I have but I've never used it on a canvas and I'm afraid of wonking things up too much and that's kind of hard to come by I want to use things that are easy for y'all to get to so this is the enamel I got at Walmart metallic gold and there it is and first thing I'm going to do is grab a tiny little brush and put the indication of a halo above her head And this is absolutely not necessary, but I'm putting it, so we'll see if it's even going to show up. It doesn't show up very much. Go a little thicker with it. But it's the indication of it that matters. I'm going to get my tiny little palette knife again. It's still got paint on it. Let me get that out. And ever so slightly here and there muddy up her feathers and her gown with the gold it's so wet i've got i've got to blow dry it i hate to do that to y'all but really needs to be done before i smear more paint The background really is busier than I wanted it to be, so I'm going to show you something else in a minute in case this happens with yours. I don't know, you know, what kind of paper you may have on hand that you're uh, gluing to your canvas, but let's just get a little gold in here, here and there first.
this paint is a lot thinner than the Blick that I'm used to using, so I'm trying really hard not to get too much on my knife at one time. But that is a tip when you're using a palette knife. It does help to, you know, water your paints down some. And I'm trying to just hit the sort of the really high areas that are left from the texture with this and splotch it through. whole this halo solid Fold my palette over now to try to have some to still use. When it's too busy like this, there the next thing that you would be able to do, and I'm going to do it using the same colors we have been using, and I'm going to go back to the uh, unbleached titanium. Because it is an underlying color here in our, in our theme. go back to the palette knife I was using earlier sort of a medium size with the point I'm trying to think of what I could smear this with but I really don't want to add any more color and I'm just gonna come along the outside Sort of halo it around, bring that out a little. Something else I sometimes do, and I, I don't know what, what reminded me of that is, sometimes I would see somebody doing something like this, and I would think, why in the world did you put all that under there to begin with if you're just going to come back and cover it up? Well, whenever you're working with mixed media, it takes layers and layers and layers of stuff, and sometimes you never see what the first layers were. And uh, But just them being down there is part of the therapeutic aspect of doing the painting it's important that it that it be there I'm I I'll tell you one I told one of my friends one time that if I was her when she was getting ready to do a mixed media piece for the first time I said here's the instructions you take a marker and you go on your canvas before you do anything else and you write something and whatever you write in there nobody else will ever know because it's going to be covered up but you will always know what was there as a matter of fact i told her to write my husband is a butt then paint him a picture he liked and give it to him and grin every time she looked at it because that's how he was acting that day and i don't know if she got it or not i don't know if y'all are get it or not but i write if i paint a picture for one of my grandkids i'll write you know, Shelton, I love you more than anything. I'm so proud that you're my grandson, and I pray that life will bring you everything that will always make you happy. And I put that under there, and he'll never know it was there. 
but it's there. The spirit of me, of me and that thought will be behind that painting forever, even though nobody will ever see it or know it was there but me. And that's part of the beauty of doing mixed media, too, is, is through all the layers and the things that you put in there, you're hiding some of the other layers, but sometimes just having the stuff that's in the other layers and having it there is is a, an important part of the process of why you do mixed media to begin with. It's because you're wanting to experiment with different things and use pretty things and and convey a message, maybe. So, I didn't write a message under this one today, but that's okay. I could write a message on here right now if I wanted and then paint it over. I could just think it and send it through. Okay, I think she's done. She looks so dark to me that I actually would like to put another color in there, but I don't know what color that I would put. I think I want it to be neutral anyways. It kind of looks like her head's broken there, but her head's just twisted around this way. Let me see if I can do anything about that at all. Nah, it's okay. So I appreciate y'all joining me today. If you asked any questions and I wasn't able to see them because I don't, I have the camera on a, you know, on my stand today. So I can't, which is my phone and I can't see the, the comments at the same time as, as I'm painting. I'll go, definitely go back and ask them. I would be anxious to see, uh, your angel if you paint one. I feel like I need to, I'm, I'm, doing it again I feel like she still needs to be outlined so I'm going back again with my burnt umber and if I haven't told you this in in flower school this is called step seven when you're supposed to leave it alone and you just can't help yourself and you're wanting to do more and it's supposed to be through but you just want to do one more thing and that's what I'm going to do I'm just I added, I stuck my palette knife, the paint was so thick, I stuck my palette knife down in, in my cleaning water and thinned out the paint a little bit. And I'm just going to outline. Wasn't quite enough. Get a little bit more. I'm going to dip my palette knife, mash it down, thin it out a little bit more.
Okay, there she is. I'm done. I'm done. The last thing, you always got a sign. That's an awfully thick brush. Let's um, get a thinner one. And I'll open it back up and use some of the golden white. Always sign mom with a T. In the year. Okay. I appreciate y'all watching. I hope that you'll share your pictures of your uh, abstract angels with me. I would love to see them or anything else that you're working on. I hope everybody has a good uh, rest of your weekend and the rest of the holiday season and the rest of the year. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye.